Hi, I'm Charlie Phillips. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some FPV cameras, transmitters and antennas. So on the table in front of me I've got various bits and pieces. You've probably seen or you may have seen my other video about how to get a GoPro and use that as FPV on a, a Chearson. Um, and here is a pretty standard um, receiver with a screen on it. The main thing I want to talk about today though is antennas, uh, linking it all together and a little bit about uh, telemetry. So uh, you've probably seen these um, and you may even have seen some of these stick antennas. These come with all sorts of receivers. Uh, there's an immersion RC um, standard, it comes with one of these rubber duck antennas. They're very, very cheap and there's a reason for that, they're rubbish. Principally, uh, in terms of the application we're using them for, um, vertically polarised antennas, which is what this is about, what happens is you get a waveform that comes up and down and it's going up and down. So as long as your two antennas are side by side, uh, uh, polarised to each other, so they're up and down, you'll get the full wave signal travelling between them. But of course it's very rare actually that you get these antennas that way up. They're often like that, or even like that. And of course as soon as you do that, the cross section between the two starts diminishing rapidly until you get to this point where this is horizontally polarised, that's vertically polarised, and effectively they can't see each other. Now the reality is you get some cross talk and they will kind of work, but your range is massively reduced. So how do you get around this? Well, some clever guys online looked at uh, what you needed and said, well, if we had circular polarisation, it wouldn't really matter if you were tipped over. So that's precisely what they did. They got uh, small sections of aerial at the right angle and then twisted them. So this is a left-hand polarised antenna. And if I show you this one as well, that's a right-hand polarised antenna. So... What does that mean? Well, just in the same way that a vertical polarised doesn't see horizontal polarised, left-hand polarised doesn't see right-hand polarised. Now, the reality is, again, you get a bit of crossover, and the thing is, when you've got something rotating like this, when it hits the ground and reflects, it turns the other way. So you're still going to see uh, plenty between the two, even if you do, but especially if they're on the same um, frequency. But crucially, if you have a left-hand antenna next to a right-hand antenna in the frequency range, so when you pick the frequency on your um, signal or, or channel, then you get an awful lot less crosstalk between the two. And surprisingly enough, uh, there's a few guys on, on the web who've actually done this and shown that you can have adjacent channels with opposing uh, polarisation and you don't get the crosstalk. Uh, I've got two sets here. This was actually the first set I had, um, and this is another set. I, I bought a whole load of these on eBay and then realised actually they're not that difficult to make once you've got the measurements right. You just have to get these soldered in properly. Um, they break. You hit things, these bend and break, and then you, you just have to resolder it in. This one, in fact, could do a little bit down there. Now, the other thing about these is you've got an awful lot more radiant area we're looking at the length of that is about a centimetre, you've got a half centimetre either side. Um, look up online for the exact measurements. When you look at one of these, if you pull it apart, that's the radiant surface area. Now it's a very similar length overall to what's on these, but that's your area. It's not very much. It's actually quite handy. When I was first doing FPV on a little mini quad, I just stuffed a little antenna on top because it's a <laughs> much more difficult to break um, and one of the things you can do is put it at 45 degrees already so that when you tip it over it's upright um, limited success with this kind of thing you're never going to get it work as satisfactorily as with a circular polarized antenna so chuck them away use these what do you need behind that well you need a transmitter so this is a sky zone this is i think this was a 600 milliwatts um, it's fat shot compatible, it's got 32 channels, 50 to 80 quid. Um, this is a miniature 200 milliwatt one, and I use this one on the Chearson. And in, in fact, 
it's as big as that little section there is that whole transmitter. The nice thing about these other transmitters, they're nicely packaged, you get a nice button to change channels. Um, on these little ones you get a whole series of dip switches. Um, and the Immersion RC, they have an extra little bit of uh, channel selection and um, tweaking to it to make it a bit more um, visible in the goggles. So, tricks to watch out for this, look inside the connector. Some of them have got a pin, some of them, like the Fat Shark and the Immersion, they don't have a pin, they have a socket. You can't see it, probably. Um, Bring it in really close. I very much doubt if you can. Um, so you often end up with a load of adapters. This one's got a pin. This one's got a socket. So the socket one goes on the socket connector. Pin one goes on there on the socket. So there's your transmitter done. Key part, don't ever, ever run these without an antenna on them. They just overheat and blow themselves to pieces. Um, two different sorts of antenna here. That's the transmitter, that's the receive. I don't know the science behind how they choose which is which. Doesn't really matter if you get them the wrong way around, actually. You won't break anything, they just won't be as efficient. Um, so it's the, the three petal one goes on your transmitter and the four petal one goes on your receiver. So once you've got all these set up, you need a camera. So here's a whole series of cameras over here. Um, the typical board camera that you see on uh, mini quads. So there's a mini quad. They've often got fixings on the front such that this, and this has got the frame on it, just clips in place. That's fine, they're very good cameras. Um, they've got great light rejection. Um, they're reasonably robust, although obviously you've got a circuit board open on the back of this. The big problem is, when you're flying these things, they don't fly like that, they fly like that. You're going forward, so you want this camera to be angled the right direction. So I generally end up getting these little encapsulated ones. Um, they go on a, an anti a vibration proof mount, so you've just got a little bit of rubber in the top. And then you can aim them up, so that when you're flying along, and a fair old lick, you can actually see where you're going instead of just seeing the ground. So these are 10, 20, 30 pounds depending on where you get them from. Um, this one I've mounted it on some rubber balls again to try and stop the jello and interference. Uh, these, the Fat Shark ones, you can pay as much as 50 quid, you can pay 30 quid, you can pay 20 quid. Um, you can get some little Chinese ones which are okay they're quite tricky to mount though um again they're 600 800 lines depending on what you want to do that's an old 420. um and this is a fat shark pilot i thought i'd give it a go because this one's got an sd card in it so it records at the same time which might be quite useful on a mini quad although this is quite heavy so interesting thing is the fat shark ones come with a plug on one end that goes into into the um back of the camera and the other end is perfectly designed to plug straight into provided they haven't had too much plastic on plug straight into the receiver into the transmitter um, your power goes in here ground and battery that's great it's almost plug and play you literally plug it in so plug the camera in there Attach your power, that's your FPV, done. Okay, so that's kind of what I've done with the Cheerson, and I think this thing's still running. This is, you get output, you can see what you're doing. And for the kind of stuff you're doing with the Cheerson, that's absolutely fine. Because all you really need to do is see, line up your shot. Uh, these kind of things, they're floating around, you want to get nice photographs, you want to get nice shots. You can see what you're seeing through the GoPro, you get everything you need. Mini quads, you need to be a bit quicker. You also don't get to see the lights. So on a Cheerson you've got lights that blink and you can hear the, the battery alarm when it goes off. 
Um, these don't. So what you can do is you can get this is uh, an easy easy OSD. It's got a battery sensor on it so that it tells how much power you've used. It's got GPS built into it and interestingly enough because it's made by the same people as make the transmitter you can plug your camera straight into there. Okay. That's cool enough. The output from it then plug straight into your transmitter. Oh, then all you need to do is connect the power. You've got OSD straight away. So this gives you straight out of the box everything you need to do FPV. You've got a battery sensor so it tells you how much battery is left. It's got a GPS on so it'll tell you which way is home. It's got various gyros on so it'll tell you whether you're upright or upside down. Um, and it all goes straight into your camera. And this one has even got an SD re um, recorder on it as well. So you get to record what you've seen in high definition. That kind of thing. Okay, the Easy OSD, uh, depending on where you go, is about £100. Um, these, okay, those are about 50 to 70 quid. But you can get cheaper versions. These are about 30 quid. And it's still plug compatible. So this plugs straight into there. Exactly the same. Um, and these cameras, okay, that's an expensive one. Where's my other little one gone? Here it is. These are a tenner. You might have to change the plug on the end. So that's a very much simpler way of doing it. Um, a few of you might have noticed uh, this antenna on the top here. Um, this is circular polarised. It's left, as it says there. It's a high gain antenna. So whereas the receive um, frequency on this is a circle, this one is an ellipse. So you get much better signal strength in front than you do to the sides. Um, perfect for diversity because it means that when you're looking at this, I've got that going at the moment. You can see these lights say which one is going. Well, that says that my high gain antenna is going. If I cover my antenna up, okay the other one lights up and that means this one's receiving notice i'm sideways on literally the signal is that low that you can tell when it's going to work says he and it doesn't work there we go um diversity is very good it means you can put a long range and a short range antenna on so i think i've covered just about anything there any questions put them in the comments below um you tend to end up with a collection of all this kind of stuff. You'll see I've got ended up with all sorts of sockets and dead areas and that kind of thing. Um, if you need any advice, ask a question. I can always do another video. Hmm. Time for me to tidy the desk again. Have a good night.